Okay, welcome back. So now that we've talked about how to conduct a differential white blood cell count using the Alte scientific model, we're going to do that process for real by preparing our own blood smear from canine blood. So first off, what are you going to need? Well, you're obviously going to need gloves because we are messing around with real blood. You also need your blood sample, which we have here. And again, this is canine blood. And then we have three different stains here. First of all, what we have here is methanol, and methanol is going to act as our fixative. And this is the primary reason we're wearing gloves, because methanol is very, very toxic. Okay, after that, we're going to immerse our blood smear in the second stain here, which is eosin. And eosin is going to stain most of the cytoplasm. And then finally, the, the third thing here, this stain is uh, probably methylene blue or something like that. And that's going to be primarily a nuclear stain. So we're going to fix stain, stain. But before we can do that, we actually have to prepare our blood smear using some microscope slides. So let's go through that process. Okay, so what we want to do next is get our blood sample and make sure that we invert it several times so that it's nice and evenly mixed. And then we're going to take the top off there. And what we need is some kind of applicator, uh, either a, a toothpick or something like that. Uh, we want to break the end of it a little bit, make it a little bit broader, and just uh, take a little bit of that blood. And then we're going to put a big drop, not so big drop, on our uh, slide. And then very quickly, we put our blood away. And then what we're going to do with the second slide, a spreader slide, is we're going to pull back over the sample until the blood runs up and down and then push very quickly that way. And that didn't work very well. Okay. So once again, we're going to take our sample, place a little drop of blood there, okay. and then take our spreader slide, which we have to have ready. We're going to pull back over that, wait until it runs up and down, and then push forward evenly. So we've gotten a kind of short smear right there. So we're going to try to make a few other ones. We want the smear to go most of the way, about two-thirds of the way down the slide, uh, and then have a nice feathered edge, because it's along that feathered edge that we're actually going to be counting the white blood cells. So let's try again. Again, I get two slides out. I get my specimen slide, and then I get a spreader slide. And they need to be clean slides. Don't try to reuse your slides. I'm going to add another drop to my slide. Okay. And then I'm going to use my spreader slide to pull back about a 45 degree angle and then push forward just like that. So I get a smear that looks not so bad. It'll look a lot better, of course, when it's stained. So I'm just going to set that aside to dry. And we're going to make one more. Okay. So I got my slide there, get my spreader slide. And it's been a long time since I've done a blood smear, so you always need to practice. Get yourself a decent sized drop. And you have to do it really quickly before it begins to clot. Okay, again, hold your spreader slide down like this, pull back into it, and then press forward evenly. Okay, still didn't go as far across as I wanted. So let's try it one more time. And this time, let's make the angle a lot, uh, a lot more, I guess, obtuse, are we trying to say? Okay, so we'll get our blood sample. Nice big fat drop of blood. Maybe too much. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit taller this time and see what happens. Okay, into it and then forward. Woo. Okay, you see that one made it very, very short, so that's no good. In fact, I want it to be about two thirds of the way across the slide. So the answer here is I want to make it a much lower angle. So let's try one more time. Okay. Again, I'm going to keep a really low, narrow angle. So I'm going to pull back into it, let it run up and down, and then push gradually. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we'll see if that blood smear is any decent. So what we're going to do now is let those slides air dry for about five or ten minutes, and then we're going to come back and stain them with our three stains. Our methylene blue, which is our fixative, our eosin, which was our uh, cytosol, our cytoplasm stain, and then we have our nuclear stain right here, which is our methylene blue. All right, welcome back. We've now uh, given about 10 minutes for our microscope slides to dry, and they're nice and dry. And now we're going to talk about the procedure for fixing and staining them. So we're going to go ahead and open up all three of these, uh, these bottles. And again, the methanol is very volatile. That's number one. So you want to make sure you keep that uh, basically tied up every time. Uh, otherwise, it evaporates really quickly. So just choose your best blood smears, and then we're going to go through the process of putting them in all three of the solutions, and then we're going to do a rinse in water. Um, now, so I'm going to pick my best one, probably that one right there, and I'm going to do 10 dips in here. Okay. 
Okay, and get the excess fluid off there. 10 dips in the eosin. Okay, now some people have you rinse in between this one and the next one, uh, so that's not my stain, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then 10 in here. Okay. okay. And then final rinse in water. And normally we would do this under tap water, but we don't have a readily available sink real close, so we're gonna do this right here. Okay, so that's fine. And I will put this in that one. So we'll be able to rinse them off again in a minute. Okay, let's do another one, but zoomed in. So again, I just pick up my smear. Okay, 10 dips into the methanol. Okay, get the excess material off there. And 10 dips in the eosin. Or I can swish it in there for 10 seconds. It doesn't really matter. Again, get the excess material off. I'm going to rinse it before I go into the nuclear stain, but some people don't. That's fine. And then 10 seconds dip in there. And since the, uh, the fluid is really low in here, I'm going to have to get creative to get it all up there. Okay. And then we're going to rinse off in there again. Okay, so we've now had about 10 or 15 minutes for our blood uh, slides to dry. Now let's take a look at the results. So what you can see is we stained about six or five or six different slides here. And what I want you to notice is none of these are actually, you know, what we would call histopath quality. I don't do this enough. Uh, but the other thing is some are better than others. If you take a look at slides one through three, you can see that the smear is a lot longer. And that was because I had a much lower angle as I was pushing across. These slides here, four, five, six, the smear itself is much shorter, and that's because I generally had a very steep angle with that spreader slide, so it was too steep. It was like this, whereas I want something a little bit more like this. So the angle of the spreader slide really determines uh, how long your smear will be. And the important part to realize is that we're not going to look at the entire smear. The part that we're looking at on the smear is actually a very small area. So I'll use this slide to illustrate. So here was the drop of blood that we put. We pulled the slide back into it and we pushed forward. Now as we did that, we're going to have really thick cells right here. They're going to be multiple layers. We can't reliably identify things in multiple layers. So we're going to be looking out here in what's called the feathered edge. And let's see if I can find a better slide that might show you that. So the feathered edge should look like feathers, like at the edge of a feather. Okay, so it's feathered if we look on there microscopically. And you'll be able to see that underneath the microscope. So it's this small area right here that we're going to review as part of our review of the blood smear and doing our differential white blood cell count.